CBD oil has become a, um, a pretty standard thing in, uh, I guess, cultural dialogue right now. Um, you've obviously got like CBD shops that are opening up with different products that are introduced uh, to the marketplace. And um, I know like pet, there are certain pet foods and um, kind of pet medications that are not really medications to help calm down anxiety in, in animals. And, and people are really starting to kind of um, introduce hemp and the use of it in daily products a lot more in life. So I've actually received several or, and bought a couple, but mainly I've received them in different subscription boxes, CBD based makeup products. So I figured what fun, uh, what a fun way to, to celebrate hump day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Uh, let's celebrate it with trying out some CBD products. I personally, just as a backstory, um, obviously CBD is hemp. It's like a variation of um, marijuana without the HTC. Is that what it is that's in there? HTC. THC. THC. HGTV. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, um, so it does not have the THC in there to make it marijuana. Obviously some like CBD products kind of have the same smell to it. Uh, I personally don't smoke. I don't see anything wrong with smoking. It's just not my favorite thing to do. So I do not choose to partake in the Mary Jane often. Uh, often being since I was like 17 years old and whatever. But I don't really personally like the smell of it. Um, I know one of the face oils I have used in the past and it, it, it be smelling a little bit like a like a post Malone concert. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say Woodstock, but yeah, yeah, a little bit. So, um, so I'm expecting my face to kind of have that uh, that residual smell on it all day because that's what happened last time. But I did want to um, to do it on camera to have some fun with it. Uh, there are some products that I haven't used yet, so it will be a first impressions as well. But yeah, I've got a couple things that I've chosen. Two of them we're gonna do now, and then I'm gonna hop off camera. I'm gonna do my base makeup, and we'll come back and finish up everything. Uh, the first one is going to be this uh, CBD coffee lip scrub that I got from my uh, oh glam addict. The, Glam Addict, no, Glow Addict. Glam. No, Glow. Yep. You wanna call it Glam Addict. Yep. And now I'm, you've thrown me off and I promise I'm not high right now. <laughs> I might seem like it though. <laughs> Um, anyway, so we've got the, uh, the CBD Coffee Lip Scrub. It is Good Days, G-E-W-D. So like good, but spelled like, like good. Yeah, so I don't know if that's the brand or if that's the name of the product, but it is a CBD coffee lip scrub. And I'm pretty excited about this. Um, when you smell it, it doesn't smell at all like um, like hemp or anything. It smells like coffee. So if you were hoping for hemp flavored and you're gonna be disappointed if you don't like coffee because it smells like coffee. So I'm excited to test that one out. And then we've got the Ultra Repair Cannabis and Oat Dry Oil. I believe this is First Aid Beauty. It doesn't say, I don't see any. Oh no, no, it does. I just, I'm, I'm a mess today, y'all. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's from First Aid Beauty. It looks like their packaging, so that's, that's, but then I found their name. So yes, First Aid Beauty. And I believe that came in one of my Ipsies. And then my mom actually got this from Kiehl's. It is the Cannabis Sativa Seed Oil Herbal Concentrate. So another face oil. This is the one that smells like, uh, like it's, it's strong, it's potent. That's some good kush right there. So this is the one that's going to be a little bit more uh, more pungent, I think. But I'm not really sure how to do this where I can like kind of see me almost like a comparison of like maybe one of the oils is better. So what I decided to do instead of like mixing them together is I'm gonna do this side of my face, this one, and then this side of my face, this one. So it'll be like that. And then we'll just go, we'll see which, if one of the sides looks brighter or better. So only half of my face technically will smell like Kush for the whole day. Be great, great, we'll have fun. Uh, then we're going to do the Pure Cosmetics. You guys know if you've watched our channel at all, I've done a ton of Pure products because I really do genuinely love the brand. But I found this on Ulta's website on sale for like 22 bucks. And I was like, let's try it. This is the Pure Extreme Visionary Palette. It's got these gorgeous, pretty uh, pinks and golden shimmers and all this good stuff, the colors that I typically gravitate towards. But then when I was reading up on the palette before I purchased it, it's actually a CBD palette. They call it a 12 piece magnetic eyeshadow palette with hemp. So I was like, all right, let's throw it into the CBD uh, collection. And then the final thing is, I don't think this has anything to do with CBD, but it was kind of on theme because it is uh, something, once again, that I got from the, uh, the, the Glow Addict subscription box. They are uh, lashes, but it's 420 somewhere lashes. 
And uh, if you're if you're new to our channel, hi, I'm uh, Andy, and I don't ever put on fake eyelashes because I glue my eyes shut. So this should be entertaining for you guys to see as well. But I just figured, what the hell? Let's throw it in there. Let's test them out. Um, I did pull them out, and they're like two inches long. So it's. It, gonna be fun. Now, while I'm doing the uh, the lip scrub, we'll start with the lip scrub. I'm gonna talk because that's a good idea. So like, let's just, let's get this bad boy out. That's what he looks like on the inside. That's what he looks like on my finger. That's what he, that's what he looks like on my lips. Doing well, doing well. Go, oh, go, oh God. It's like eating coffee grounds. It's all in my mouth. Shouldn't be talking while I'm doing this, but I'm going to. So while we're doing this, I'm just kind of going to talk about why CBD in makeup is good. Like, cause that's kind of my first thing is I was like, so what is it doing for me? Like, why is it important to try CBD products? Why are people putting CBD in their makeup products? What is it doing for my skin? Cause that's kind of what I was wondering at first. It was a conversation I had with my mom. Cause my mom, that's when she gave me the CBD oil from Kiehl's, she was just like, I'm not going to use this. And we were talking about why. And she actually suffers from autoimmune diseases, several of them. And so CBD would probably be very good for her. It's on my tongue. It actually doesn't taste bad. I look like I just ate it's like charcoal or something. I don't know. We're gonna sit here while it sits on my lips for a minute. We're gonna talk. So the idea behind CBD oil in it, uh, it does have several really important properties to it. So we've got, uh, it heals acne interesting enough. It uh, reduces inflammation, which makes sense because it is a high anti-inflammatory. So it's supposed to kind of um, like cool your skin down and uh, take out the puffiness that you're going to experience. It's supposed to help reduce redness in a lot of areas. Um, it does nourish sensitive skin. And it also, um, because it has antioxidant properties, it's going to help you reduce the signs of uh, aging on your skin and it helps promote collagen production under your skin as well. Um, and that's because it contains omega-6 and omega-3. Interesting, I didn't know any of that. That was like a literal, like a quick like, Google search, like on the just the homepage my extensive research, I was just like, so what does CBD do? And they were like, this is what it does. And I was like, I'm not gonna click on a link. I'm just gonna look at that. So yes, so, there we go. so I'm sure there's a ton more information and a lot more detailed information about it uh, to help you guys um, better look if you're interested. But I just wanted to give you guys some ideas of what it's supposed to be going in there and doing for your skin really quickly. Okay, so this has been uh, sitting on my lips for a couple minutes. We're gonna wipe it off. Uh, I will say uh, my application of it probably was not the most effective because I got grounds all up. There's one right there in my tooth. They're all in my mouth. It's like I licked the inside of a used coffee filter. It doesn't taste awful considering it's you know, not edible, but it definitely, I mean, it's an exfoliating. Coffee grounds are great if you guys don't know for exfoliating. Uh, I used to make my own coffee ground like body scrub and face scrub, just saving my old coffee grounds and mixing it with a little bit of vegetable oil. And I would do it like once a week normally because I didn't want to do it too frequently and it also makes your shower an absolute mess but they really do a great job exfoliating so the grounds actually do a great job of like going in there and really removing like the dead skin off your lips i'm pretty excited i'm gonna put a little bit of the cbd oil on my lips too when i'm doing that while i'm talking we'll go ahead and do that one side and then the other side and this is the smelly one he's green he looks like olive oil oh, already already got the whiff before, before COVID, we were both planning on, my, my parents were planning on taking a cruise in September and we were planning on going one in December. We'll see if that actually happens this year now with uh, with everything that's going on. We were talking about it when I first tried the the hemp oil. I was like, oh my God, it's so, it's so pungent. I can smell it on my skin. And she was like, maybe don't do that. Like if you're going on like an airport, in an airport or like on a cruise because you know, the drug sniffing dogs may like come at you. And I was like, good point. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to have nice skin. <laughs> Please don't arrest me. FBI, open up! Sweet. So it's all nice and worked in there. I don't like when I use oils, I try not to put too, too much because then it just is like a greasy mess, which is not what we're, we're trying to do here. So yeah, so I'm going to let this absorb into my skin for a little bit. Um, on top of this, I am going to do a moisturizer still because when I, even when I use oils, I like to just add like a little bit extra uh, moisturizer. Uh, people may be like, why? I, I don't know. I just do it. I'm sorry. Um, and then I'm going to do, uh, of course, my primer, my base makeup and all that good stuff. We'll come back after my brows and everything are done and we will take a look at the palette and we will do our damnedest to apply these 420 eyelashes. It's probably going to be a hot mess, but hope, hopefully not. Uh, yeah. So I'll be right back. 
All right, I'm back and I look different now, yay. Okay, so I did my base, I did my brows, I did my blush and contour and lips and all that good stuff. And now we're ready to jump into the eyes because it's gonna take me a hot minute to do those because of the lashes. So I'm a little, <gasps> it's fine, it's fine. The oils on the skin, I really do like them. I actually didn't feel like I noticed the smell of the Kiehl's as much this time. I don't know if it's because I've, tr I've tried it already. And so like the initial like, oh my gosh, is kind of worn off for me. Or I don't know, last time I didn't seal it with a moisturizer afterwards. Um, so it was just that and then my primer on top of it. Maybe that somehow helped or affected it. I don't know, but I'm really not noticing the scent. It's also very possible. Uh, it's just that I'm congested today because of allergies. So that might be the, the issue too. I don't know. Um, but here we are. We are moving along into the eye portion of it. We are, once again, we are gonna highlight the Pure Extreme Visionary Palette. A lot of really pretty neutral colors in this one. And I'm thinking I'm probably gonna go in with Rebel. I'm gonna go maybe in with Role Model, which is kind of like a, a nice like blending shade. Um, this Idealist will probably be like my like brow blending shade. And then um, I'm thinking for highlight, I'm gonna go in with Girl Boss because it's really gorgeous. And I'm thinking for my lid, I'm probably gonna go in with Dreamer because I really like that shade too. And then we're gonna do some eyeliner on top of it. Uh, and then we're gonna try these uh, these horrifyingly daunting uh, eyelashes that I'm probably going to uh, not do well with, but we'll, here we are. So let's jump in to the actual eye portion of it. Um, I have not washed my brushes in a hot minute, so I grabbed uh, all new brushes that I haven't used very regularly, so they're all clean, yay. So I'm gonna start with Rebel, and I'm going to take this uh, 1520 brush that I, I got in my uh, Glow Attic box. I didn't mean for it to, but I've gotten two Glow Attic boxes, and now this has kind of almost been like a feature for them too, so. I'm gonna start just with my outer corner. Do a nice little tap, tap, tap. Pretty, that's pretty shade, I like that a lot. That's the nice thing about this particular palette is there's a lot of really gorgeous glitter pigments. There's a lot of really pretty neutral shades and there's not a super like heavy amount of dark colors, but there's still some good like key, dark, vibrant colors, which I always like. I like shades um, that give you a little bit of accent color, but overall it's like a lot of workable shades are involved in the palette as well. Um, that way, especially if you're somebody who, like my mom really doesn't go for vi bright, bright, vibrant colors, but she would definitely get use out of this palette because it's got a lot of other things she can work with that aren't like really, really crazy. But I'm liking the formula. It seems to be applying really well. It seems to be, you know, not a lot of fallout and, and pretty much where I'm tapping is where the color is laying down, which I... All right, while I'm doing this, I figured it would be fun. I was trying to think about fun things to chat about with you guys today. So I figured let's chat about some things that we have watched recently. Specifically, we watched two, like they were classified horror. I'm gonna call them more psychological thrillers that we watched over the weekend that were, I think, were they both Netflix originals? I think they were. One was called Open House and the other one was called just Cam, right? Both were, they, like I said, classified as horror, I would definitely consider them more psychological thrillers. Like, you know, people died or people were like attacked, but it wasn't really like gory, which is kind of what I like anyway. How do you, how, what do you think, Nikki? How do you feel about them? Um, well, I, I don't know that I would even consider Cam a horror movie. It was definitely more psychological thriller. Yeah, I don't know if they meant it, but it just wasn't very psychological thriller either. It was almost just a drama. Like it had that, that like kind of WTF moment, but it wasn't really like. I don't know it. So, okay. So we'll talk about, we watched Open House first, but we'll talk about Cam first because I actually really enjoyed it. I, um, I liked it a lot. I kind of understand what Nikki is saying about it not being a psychological thriller, but the whole concept is basically, it's a girl and she's um, a cam girl, which of course is like, you know, somebody who performs shows online um, for, normally sexual pleasure, but it doesn't have to be like it's, I mean, it, this one was more of like a sexualized cam show, but I mean, like I've literally seen people talk about like, oh, people do cam shows of just like them sitting and like ignoring you. And I'm like, I, I want it. Can I do that? I can ignore people. Great. So this one, she, um, and she'd kind of come up with like this persona that was a little bit dark. Like she would do things like fake her own suicide on camera and people like loved it, went crazy for it. And she had worked her way up on the site, like almost to one of the top positions. Like she was just like a, about to break like 50th ranking in her, or her cam room. So she'd worked really hard on it. And basically then she gets locked out of her account and somebody is stealing it and still using her face, but it's not her. 
And so she's trying to figure out like what the hell is going on. And I, to me, that is scary because like that's why it was a psychological thriller for me because the idea of somebody using my personality, my persona, my face and portraying things that I'm not in control of is terrifying. So that's why to me, it's definitely like a psychological thriller. But the concept of it, I really was into. And then the ending, I was like, why? You could have done so much more with like, it could have it could have been such a good movie. And then the ending, like the last 10 minutes of it, I was just like, this is a waste. Like you, you had so much potential and then nothing. And I won't spoil it for you guys. Like I said, it's on Netflix if you gotta wanna watch it and then, or if you have watched it and you like have, you would like to start a discussion, I would love in the comments for you guys to like kind of tell me what you think of it because I, I really wanted so much more from it. And I was really like, I was into it. I was like, what's happening? What is it? But it just, I feel like there's this huge trend right now in, in horror movies or psychological thrillers or where there's just no conclusion. Like they're just like, that's it. Like there's sometimes there's some unanswered questions in life and that's fine, but I don't watch movies for that reason. I watch movies because I wanna see a storyline and I wanna understand how it ends and it can end and leave me unsettled. That's fine. I just want it to end. And we'll go into, so we'll talk about open house now because that's really like, that's more of the one that, that angered me for that reason. Before we jump into that, uh, I did, I love this. I kind of love like the whole, what's going on here. I like it. I, I, it's, it's dramatic, but it's, I mean, this one's a little, Wah. But this one's always a little wham. This eyebrow is a little wham today too. So there we go. It is what it is. But I really like the shade. I like the way it applied. I like the brush too, because the first time I've used the brush, brush is great. Digging this so far. Uh, we're gonna move into the blending shade, which I'm gonna use Role Model. And I'm just gonna go over top of this and just pat it down and make it like a little bit more blendy. A little more blendy blendy. All right, so blendy blendy, here we go. Blendy blendy. Before we jump into open house, sorry. I, if you guys can't tell, I have, a, a self-diagnosed ADD. Um, I'm sure I should be on Adderall, but I'm not because uh, yeah, I just, uh, nope, I just tough through it. So here we are. Anyway, uh, before we do that, uh, Nikki, your thoughts on Cam. I know you said that you didn't think it was a psychological thriller, but I explained why I liked it and what I thought of it and how I felt. So how did you feel? I mean, I enjoyed it. I did think it was it was good. I, I agree, the last 10 minutes, it was just kind of like, but for what? So. <laughs> well, you did this for why? <laughs> It just, and I understand, like, it, it was creepy, like, the concept was creepy, but it wasn't psychological thriller creepy. Like, it was just a... Well, no, I guess it wasn't, like, like seven. Right, <laughs> like, it wasn't, yeah, like, I mean, like, nobody's head was in a box. Oh, what's in the box? Have to be like, seven. But for me, it was just more, it just, it just felt more like a drama with, like, one... Cut, like two scenes that made it the psychological thriller. The disappointing ending, it could have been a fantastic movie, I think. It really did have potential to just be great. Cause I was so about the storyline cause it's such a unique concept and it's so appropriate for today's age where you think about we live in such a, a, a website driven, technology driven society obviously as i'm sitting here filming a youtube video to post online obviously and and i mean like especially for someone like me who is i am putting my image out there and everything like the idea of somebody taking it and using it and using my you know my body and my my mouth and my my words that are not my words and are not my sentiment that's terrifying because it, it's like like the dark web whacks me up so much excuse my language nikki will quack it out i'm sure but it, it scares me so much I, like i can't i think about it but i can't like i'll never go on the dark web but the idea of it is like both horrifying and like almost like I, like i listen to like narrators talk about like true stories and stuff about the dark web because i'm just like it's just so scary to me. It's so scary. So that's why I liked it, but it, yeah, could have been better. Overall, I'd give it like a, probably give it like a seven out of 10. Seven swims. So, so I'd give it, yeah, I'd give it seven swims. Out of how many? Mm, four. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Lochte, you are my spirit animal. So now, now we've gotten both of our opinions on. Also, like just since we are still doing makeup here, love it. I'm really liking like everything that's happening right now. I really like the colors. They are really, really blending well together. Like very, very easy to kind of mold. Uh, this is going to uh, definitely be the superior eye today, unless I really mess up the eyeliner and the uh, the eyelashes. But uh, but yeah, like 
I'm, I'm liking it. Both of the shapes are like semi-decent. You know, if the shape is messed up, it's not the eyeshadow's fault, it's mine. So that's that's on me. But uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. So we're about to move on to, we're gonna move into the blending shade Idealist. And that when I say blending shade, I'm just going to like kind of basically put it all over and then blend it into my eyebrows so that it's a little bit less of a harsh line between my skin and my uh, my eyeshadow. That's a word of one here. Back to the movies. No, we didn't even talk about the acting. I thought the acting was great. Oh, the acting was phenomenal. Cause it was really, I mean, there was nobody in the cast that was known. Um, I looked them up and just to see like if they had been in anything else and really know. But yeah, no, the acting, the, the main character, she was phenomenal. You really, I mean, you really root for her in such a weird way. Cause like, there's a lot of things. I mean, she's like lying to her family and stuff like that. So she's dealing with hard issues and, and she starts kind of like losing her, her crap because she's, her identity has been stolen, but she's such a likable character. In my opinion, some people might be like, I hated her, but like everybody's different. I liked her a lot. She was such a likable character that you're still like the whole time you're like, come on girl, like figure out who stole your face figure it out. Yeah, no, so good good acting, really good acting, and um, a <laughs> good storyline until the ending. It's like, it's just so, so disappointing to me when you got a great concept and you just can't finish it. You just get, why couldn't we finish strong? Are we ready to move on to the other story now? Okay, so let me just start by saying I would watch Cam again because I did enjoy it enough to, to sit down and watch it again because I do like watching movies for a second time because you notice a lot of like small things that you missed the first time. And I think that is um, important when you're, especially like, you know, if you want to really kind of figure out a movie or analyze it. Like The Sixth Sense. In The Sixth Sense, I had no idea that the mom doesn't talk to Bruce Willis at the beginning. She's just sitting in the same room with him and we just all assumed that like she knew he was there, but then he was dead. So like, here we oh God, if you haven't seen Sixth Sense, I'm so sorry. No, no, you haven't seen Sixth Sense. It's 2020. Where have you been? That movie is 25 years old. I see dead people. Yeah, I know. Haley Joel's like, so, she's so yeah. big now. <laughs> she's all grown up. So yeah, I don't feel bad. Bruce Willis is dead in the end. Plus, you know, Lonely Island, even if you're young, you probably, well, God, no, Lonely Island is now for old people too. Oh man. So old. Nikki turned a quarter of a decade this year. I turned it a quarter of a decade last year, so. I would not rewatch Open House because I felt like it was a waste of time. I don't even, you explain this one. I don't, you explain, I'm gonna just so, do makeup for a minute. The, the whole concept of the movie is that there's this mother and son, the father died at the very beginning of the movie, so they are leaving their, their home to live at like this, this sis, her sister's, house that she's trying to sell and they're they're kind of just taking over this space temporarily while the house is on the market and the whole time you're sorry uh really quickly i'm now going to move into dreamer on my lid and i'm going to do girl boss as the highlight while nikki is talking anyway anyway sorry the add it's back <laughs> we both have it it's not good we're i don't the movie. Yeah, the dad's, dad's dead. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> so they they move in with the sister, like like in the, into the sister's vacation home that she's trying to sell. Yeah, the, the sister's not there. The sister's yeah. rich and lives somewhere else. So. Right. The whole the whole movie it's basically just them like living in this small town, but everybody's kind of creepy. So you know something's gonna go down because it's a horror movie, but you don't know who it's gonna be. And I, I won't spoil the ending for you, but let's just say it was exponentially more disappointing. It's like a Tinder date. Yeah. Expectations are like, meh. And then the, the end result is like, ugh. Yeah. That's You're just good. happy you didn't get killed in the process, more or less. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah. Acting in that one was good too. It had the lead, the yeah. lead character in um, 13 Reasons Why he, was the one who's like listening to the tapes. I, I can't remember his name right now, but I haven't I haven't watched the anything past the first season. And I only watched that because I read the books, but or read the book. But anyway, um, yeah, he's in it. And, and I felt like all the acting was really well done considering it was like really subpar writing. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of completely agree with that. But like, yeah, I mean, it, and once again, it could have been a cool concept. It's, it was creepy. And the whole idea is that like, well, they, they're they having these open houses, they can't be there. And so the whole concept is like, it's just kind of creepy that people are like walking through your house when you're not there. I totally agree. I absolutely, 
I, mm, I will never do an open house in a house that I'm still living in. Like, I just can't do it. I'll, I, I'm sorry. Like, or I have to be there. Cause like, once again, come back to technology. Like you, there's really tiny cameras and you can stick a really tiny camera almost anywhere nowadays. And then you can, you can be watching me in the shower and I ain't about that. Like if I'm going, if you're going to watch me shower, I'm going to be a cam girl. I'm going to make some damn money doing it. So just th just saying, ain't nothing free in this life. I mean, I really, once again, it's like when you're looking at it, you're like, oh, this could be a cool concept. And then it just is not executed well. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I know that Open House was a, a Netflix original. So Netflix, like, why? Why you do that? Why well, you come up with a good concept and then just ruin it? I, I, I think we've talked about it on the channel before. If you've watched any of our, if you've, if you've watched all of our videos, cause I don't remember what video it was that we talked about it. But if you've watched uh, us regularly, you might've heard me discuss. I'm really not much of a movie person. I'm much more of like a TV series person. And then I saw this thing that like called my ass out and was basically like, you know, if you watch the same shows over and over again, it's because you have anxiety and you don't want to uh, start a new show because you already know how this one ends. And I was like, me on my 200th time watching Bob's Burgers. But anyway, I do really like watching TV shows. So I don't really, um, I, don't, I don't typically want to watch movies. So when I do want to watch movies, I always have like a very specific idea in my mind. It's like, oh, I really want to watch comedies right now. Or, oh, I really want to watch like a horror movie or a psychological thriller. And that's kind of how I was feeling on Saturday when we watched those. And I was just kind of like, they were good, but they could be so much better. Just so much better. So off camera, I'm gonna do my eyeliner because it is going to take me an exponential amount of time. And we've already been filming for a, a long time with this and I've been talking a lot. So it's not important for you to see that part. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then we'll show me struggling to get my eyelashes on. And then we will complete our CBD 420 themed uh, look for the day. So goodbye, I'll be right back. Okay, so actually did not take me as long as I was afraid it was going to. Uh, I did decide to, instead of using a pen or a pencil today, I decided to use the pretty vulgar little uh, pot of uh, eyeliner that I got in one of my boxy charms a while ago. And I use this Tarte double-sided brush and it actually worked really well. So this may be something that makes it easier for me to do eyeliner. So uh, I may be doing this more. Um, now, I don't know if you on camera you guys can see or not, but it is a little bit like reflective blue. I went ahead and put on my uh, real false lashes invisible lash glue from Benefit. And uh, it's drying a little bit to give it a little bit of like tack tacticity, tactileness. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but it's tac, tac, tacty, tacty. Anyway, so here are the lashes. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna pull these out. I am so afraid. I do not like lashes at all. And like I said, these are absolute monster ones. They're beautiful, but they are just like long. So we're gonna see how this ends up working. Do you see that? It looks like a spider. All right, I'm just delaying at this point because I'm so afraid. I'm so bad, I'm so bad. I'm so sorry, you guys. Oof. Oof. Jesus, take the wheel. Kind of, but like a little bit. It's like a little bit up too high. But like, hold, do you see how long those are? I feel like I'm gonna like take flight. I wish this one corner would just, I did not bring my tweezers and I really should have. Will you grab those for me? Thank you. While I'm waiting on tweezers for that one, <laughs> I'm gonna try and do this side. Oh, that one, that one landed pretty well, actually. The second one landed pretty well. They are so long. Do people function like this every day? God love you. This is gonna, this is like, oh my, it's like having a ferret on my face. Or a, maybe a bird, cause it's so, it's just a lot. They are beautiful though. Like I really wanna do like a costume using this. Like, yes. Okay, this one is just not quite sitting in the right spot. And I think that's part of the issue with it. That's why it's not laying as well. But I, like, I also know I'm not gonna leave these on all day. So I may just try and make it look somewhat good. And then just like, when we're done filming, just take them off. I'm pretty relaxed considering I've done two things that give me extreme stress makeup wise today. Uh, the, the eyeliner and now the brows, or now the, the brows. The brows give me anxiety too, but I just do them every day, so I'm used to it. Um, I meant the uh, the, uh, the eyelashes. So maybe it is that, C maybe that CBD is helping. Maybe it's giving me a little bit of zen. Yeah, I think, I think that, I think that uh, that bad boy is gonna be okay for this, for this. Not too long, I'm doing, I'm getting better. Considering I don't, I practice every like three months. I'm like, I think the last time I put them on was for Christmas. <laughs> like for our Christmas, one of our Christmas videos, I did some fake lashes and I was like, <laughs> they are so long. I can see myself in the camera and I'm just like, 
It's like tarantulas. It's, cool. it's wild. I like it though. Okay, so let's talk while they're drying down and I'm gonna keep, they're, they're, as I blink, I can feel this one starting to like lift off. So I'm gonna try and finish this up quickly. Oh yeah, there he goes, you little bat. Ah! All right, we did it. Go team, we did it. I feel like the CBD helped calm me down enough to handle this eye look because I put myself through a lot of stressors right right now. And it, it it turned out pretty well. I'm really excited about it. Um, I do like the eyelashes. I was just telling Nikki off camera, like I really should start doing these more for like at least special occasions because I really don't wear lashes ever except for the channel. Um, I, I think I've applied them four times in my life, uh, three times successfully. The, the first time we filmed it, it was very bad. I'm, I'm excited. I'm kind of happy that I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was a lot of fun to make. Uh, the CBD products, I think it's a kind of a thing that people are really interested in right now. So I was like, I want to highlight them. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed us talking about the movies that we watched because I was trying to figure out like something that would give us like you know, something that's entertaining for you guys that so you kind of, you know, can go maybe go look up those movies if you're interested. Um, I've been watching a lot of Bailey Sarian. Uh, I love her. She's a YouTuber. If you have not followed her and you're interested in true crime, I highly recommend you uh, checking her out because uh, she does like murder mystery makeup Mondays and I, lo I just love her. So she's actually, her channel is linked in our channel. So if you want to subscribe here, but maybe subscribe to her too. But yeah, so, uh, so that was kind of, I was trying to think about like what cool stuff we could talk about while I'm getting ready. And that was kind of like, I was like, well, those movies were interesting. So let's, let's chat about those. So yeah. Um, like I said, if you, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so hit the notification bell. So you see when we upload content and, uh, other than that, I hope you guys are all doing well and you have a wonderful day and stay girly with a dark twist.